what's happened recently is it's become kind of just a fashion thing. It's become a, an accessory. And really, jewelry shouldn't be that. I mean, it can be that, you know, just self adornment and things. But there's a, a level at which jewelry no longer is just an adornment and a bit of fun, whatever it is. It has, starts to have some real kind of. Um, it's a real heft to it, it's a real moment to it. Because that's why people are buried in it. That's why you have you know, hordes of jewellery or hordes of whatever. You don't have, you know, hordes of handbags. They say so we just found, uh, just dug up 300 Saxon handbags. Uh, and we're all absolutely thrilled because <laughs> the handbags, belts, things like So it's those adornments, those things that really mean something, you know. And right the way through history, there's been this sort of level of jewellery that's either been for a sort of power. Um, display, crowns and things, or whatever, and rich women, rich men, this sort of idea of giving or status or whatever it is, but there's also been, a, underlying that, a much, much more sentimental idea, emotional idea about jewellery. So if you go to the British Museum, uh, V&A, whatever, and watch people looking at jewellery, the, 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 the level of engagement is huge, you know, much more than it is with, with pictures even, in many cases. Because it's this idea of, you know, my God, you don't see people ooing and ahhing. You don't see that uh, in Bond Street mm. so much. You just see people going, oh, that's the new, whatever it is, I'm always not nice. It's, 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 a, it's a more the sort of same awe that meets the new Nike trainers or whatever. It's a much more sort of childlike thing. But I think with really great jewellery, you know, the level of craftsmanship employed makes it much more serious. And, you know, most, most kind of branded jewellery is just knocked out in... Factories just invent, invented really rather than designed by marketing people, by you know, merchandisers and things. So, you know, to be able to say, and next year on the 7th of October, all our creative integrity would have led to one new lot coming. It's like an artist saying, I will have my next painting ready for July the 23rd. It, 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 it doesn't happen, it shouldn't happen. I'm not being, or maybe I'm not, not trying to be pretentious about uh, about jewellery and, and making too grandiose sort of um, a case for it, but I do think it's much, much more important uh, to people, even if it's just fun. You know, it's engagement rings, it's for, uh, you know, people doing something well, it's a you know, granny's brooch, it's Aunt Mary's ring, it's, it's, it becomes part of a, a life, it does become an heirloom. Yeah, hugely. I mean, you know, tastes change. But the fundamentals of jewellery, one of the strange things is how uh, essentially basic that is, like, like colour and like um, chords, the notes, the letters of you know, the words. Words change, but, but, but only quite dramatically slowly in the same way that, that you know, colours change. You know, there are new colours that come, become available. There are new... New media become available, new new um, stones, new metals, and things, new techniques, but not much. I mean, you know, in, in, in this workshop here, other than the laser machine here, nothing much would have changed for, you know, 500 years, maybe mm. even a thousand years, for us, apart from electricity. So the tools that, that we're employing, the, the, the uh, materials that we're employing, are probably as static as you know, they are for painters. I mean, you, know, you may have now people doing things that are installations, but essentially they're using the same materials pretty much. And somebody may say, oh, well, now we've got a, a camera, but that's, you know, not much has happened with the camera in, you know, in, in 100 years, 150 years. And then the same with the computer, with these. But essentially the, you know, the materials are changing, therefore taste, although it changes enormously, you know, you could wear, piece of jewellery for a thousand years and I guess you know that there's, there's this uh, perennial quest for originality and something new and whatever and I have to say with a lot of students I see I think you know if, if everything you're doing is geared towards trying to do something new you're destined for failure because that then becomes a new invention that kind of, if you suddenly say I've just discovered the internet of jewellery then fine. but otherwise everything really is contained within those media within those, you know, what is possible and 
what it is, even if you're using titanium and things, you can do new things and make them lighter or whatever, but essentially you're looking at the same things. And so even though tests change, and it's a very circular thing, it goes, I think, you know, the jury, as with anything else, you look at flares and think, well, what was that all about? That's never come, come back. But then it does come back. You can actually come back quite like Somehow, you know, we're sort of um, duped into believing you know, the whims of some sort of fashion. But that, that's it's a very ephemeral thing. The funny thing is the reason for giving jewellery, the big main reasons remain the same. You know, power, um, lust, love, um, showing off, tenderness, all those things. You know, as you get further down to the sort of, the little thing given with, you know, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> really? Uh, I mean, it is. But if you get thought and a solid, great big stain, you know, it does help. <laughs> um, but I think on the whole, you know, the, the idea of, of, of the lack of imagination needed to say, here's a big stone, other than I really spent some time working with somebody to get something that is so completely all about you and what I'm trying to say and things. I think that it's, it's, a, it's a medium that allows uh, somebody who perhaps isn't very creative to get involved in producing something absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's very difficult for someone to say, I'd like to get involved in writing this song. I mean, um, the word love, does that help? <laughs> so, I mean, pretty much all you can do. But I think with jewellery, you really can kind of get involved in the idea of, uh, of the whole thing. And it is very, very sentimental. It's a very emotional thing. But there are reasons, you know, diamonds and diamond engagement rings are very, very recent phenomenon. I mean, and, and the brilliance of the advertising, I mean, you know, diamonds are forever and all that sort of stuff. Uh, brilliance of the advertising was that we now think of, you know, the 14th century, we think they must have given somebody, must have given somebody a diamond solitaire, and it, but they didn't, you know, it didn't exist. Um, you know, people wore lots of different types of ring, of which there'd be a morning ring, an evening ring, a, mm. uh, a dress ring, you know, an engagement ring, a beloved ring, a dearest ring, all those sort of things. They just wear them at different times, like they'd wear different, different clothes. They'd wear a wedding ring. That was the main thing. But the rest, you know, this idea of, you know, of a solitaire diamond engagement ring is a pure advertising ploy and worked at its best on uh, once the Japanese came into the market, which they were never in, you know, when they had their, their renaissance in the sort of 70s. So all these things, you know, those things are, you know, uh, the different usages of jewellery are, are interesting. There are always new markets to look at, and then old markets that come back again. And I think one of the fascinating things is that, you know, I've watched the kind of emergence of brands and the dominance of the brands, and now what I perceive of as the, the kind of... Uh, um, the reversal of the situation, where people are saying, what's all this about? You know, why am I buying something very special, of which there are 25,000, you know, just in, in West London? And so I think people are getting much more... And I do think that, that, that even if people aren't hit by a recession, or even, even if, um, you know, the idea of, of, of um, you know, a reversal doesn't impinge on them directly, still start to be more aware of, of getting things, that are, if not so much value for money, but, but uh, what they want to spend their money on. Not necessarily something that needs to be an investment, but something that will last forever, that will give them joy. You know, so if something, you know, start to think if I live for another 50 years and I, you know, it'll only cost me X a year and I'll get that much joy out of it. So we're all starting to make those kind of judgments. So I think. What has happened recently is that people have started to think, if I'm going to spend some money, I'd rather have something that's unusual, that has been handmade, that's beautifully crafted, that actually is for me, that will continue to give me joy. And that idea of being, uh, you know, buying things on so much of a whim and just saying, well, when I buy five, if I wear one, that'll be fine. I think those days have gone, even for the people who can afford to do so, I think they, they feel slightly shamed by the idea they would do that, I think you know, that, that idea of that sort of opulence is gone. And, you know, a lot of the new markets that are coming out are much more sophisticated than people thought they were, you know, and they don't want to wear something that's just a brand. You know, this idea of Western brands all conquering, whatever it is, 
you know, it's, it's, it's not right. And some of those emerging uh, markets will reduce their own designers, their own brands, you know, and, and, and bring them over here. We'll start to um, indulge in that. But they're, they're much, much more design orientated and quality conscious. So that, you know, some of the the existing, the, the emerging markets we think of as being emerging are actually quite you know, third generation. You know, the, the Middle East market is second, third generation of people who've been you know, in the money, as it were, and had, had the ability to choose what they want for a long time. And so rather than just saying, I all want the same watch and the same car and the same whatever, you look now and they're all trying to find pieces that are uh, different and you know, bespoke and what have you. So there is a, a market that was uh, you know, a brand dream because you could just sort of kind of sell any old rubbish for a vast amount of money if it, if it was in the right box. Who were saying, no, I actually want something that's really been properly made that, that you know that I can uh, um, be proud of and enjoy and things. And that's how you know, the Chinese market is a much more sophisticated market, much more knowing and aware market than people think. And one of the, the best places for us for one-off pieces for things that they can't get anywhere else, they're absolutely exclusive and what have you.